What's going on guys? Go below and subscribe to the new Hustlers Kung Fu and watch today's video. Links below. So let's talk about people don't know money. Also, happy holidays. It's a three day weekend. Enjoy your holiday. One of the things that just got me and a shout out to the credit plug. Shout out to all things real. Um, the credit plug has been, I think, for about four years teaching people about money and credit and stuff. And all things real has been putting out information. And th this is the thing. And I want you guys to answer this in the comments. Everything's on the Internet, right? Everything's on the Internet. This is one of the questions, uh, one of the things I get when I try to sell something. It's like, it's on the Internet. Why should I suppose to pay you? OK. Shouts to the credit plug. All things real. Everything's on the internet. How to buy a house is on the internet. How to buy a car on the internet. How to get a loan on the internet. Yet only 34% of Americans know how to buy a house. If all of this information is on the internet, why don't more people know this stuff? Please put that in the comments. Like literally, if you, you know, I'm a researcher, I used to work in the lab, and I'll do this, like, literally, there's no reason for you to apply for a credit card unless you know you're going to get it. You can find that information on the internet. You could go to my FICO forums, you can go to credit board forums, and you can go to, and you can actually see, with a great deal of accuracy, if you want to do the work, what credit company pulls from what credit bureau and typically what score they need to approve it. All of that information is on the internet. Yet right now, I have a friend who works at the Porsche dealership and literally, he, he told me some stuff that blew my mind. That they literally have people coming into the Porsche dealership, Porsche, apply, filling out applications and they have bad credit. And they seem to be shocked when they don't get approved. There is no reason for you to go into a Porsche dealership or for you to go into any dealership and expecting to get approved for a car because essentially th this is one of the things that I know. I know what my FICO scores are, not my credit karma scores, but my actual FICO scores. I know what my FICO score is going to look like before I go to the lender, before I put in my application. I know what my FICO score is and I know that typically what FICO score I need to have to get approved and literally except when I was applying for some business credit cards because I had too many inquiries and this is one of the things you can have a 780 credit score and have too many inquiries and get turned down for getting credit 780 that happened to me so all of this information right it's on the internet about money getting loans and stuff all this but people don't know this week I signed up a new client. The man is, um, I think he's a millionaire. I think he's a millionaire. He owns three businesses. And literally, I signed him up for the executive package because, you know, he's got these businesses and stuff. He, he needs help with credit, getting credit. But this guy, I think this guy's like 44 years old, very smart guy. He doesn't know money. He doesn't know money. And this is something that really, really got me interested in this whole conversation about money and credit and stuff. If it's on the Internet, you should be able. There is no reason for you to go into a car dealership or apply for a credit card and get turned down because the information is on the Internet. But if the information is on the Internet, why are people getting turned down? Why are people going in and applying? Like, literally, I heard this story that blew my mind. This lady, she was out. She wanted to buy a house. So she went and got a realtor, and they started looking at houses, found the house that she liked, and they applied for the, the house. And her credit score was 550. 550. And I'm like, and literally, you're seeing people who just don't understand how credit works. It's mind-blowing. And there are a number of financial literacy people on the Internet. There's tons.
thousands of them. Yet you still will have someone will go out and apply for a house, a car, or a credit card, or a loan, and get turned down because they don't know the rules of engagement. They don't know how money works. They don't know, like, you know, literally I had another conversation with someone else who, who's gotten himself in a, a bit of a little situation. He, he's got a lot of stuff going on. He got a lot of stuff going on. And he's looking for $30,000. He's like, do you know someone that give me $30,000? And I was like, not based upon your financial perspective at the moment. Your FICO score is too low. You got maxed out credit cards. There's no, there, there's like banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, Truist. These are what's called first tier lenders. Now, why are first tier lenders important? First tier lenders are where you get your cheapest money. Anything, that's not a, in credit unions, banks and credit unions and credit unions can be really, really good for you. But if you cannot get money with a first tier lender, cause you need the appropriate FICO score, you need the appropriate income. In many cases, when you get the business credit, you're going to need to provide tax returns. Then you go down to second and third and fourth tier lenders. And let me go ahead and explain to you, what will happen when you go like I did this just to see what will happen and I'll never do this again. I had a loan from QuickBooks for $150,000. They charged me $10,000 interest. I had a quick, a little loan from what's these, I don't even know what you like. I call them payday loans, even though you're in business. Essentially what you'll do is they'll give you a loan and they'll take money out of your checking account every day, Monday through Friday, they'll take out deposits until the loans paid off. They loaned me $30,000. I paid them $40,000 back. So I got $30,000 with a 10% payment term, and I got $150,000 with a $10,000 payment term. When you go with your first tier lenders, that's where you're going to get your cheapest money. That's where you're going to get your cheapest money. And there are so many people who don't understand this because when you start going to, you know, you come out of the first ten term or you go into subprime, it's more money when you get money from a subprime lender. Capital One is a very interesting credit card because Capital One has heavy subprime paper. Very, very heavy. You know, if you got a Capital One credit card, let's say your credit was bad and you got a Capital One credit card because Capital One will give you a credit card, even if you have bad credit. They'll give you a credit card with like a $500 limit, maybe $1,500, maybe $3,500. They'll do that. But the way that Capital One is designed is Capital One has tiers. And if you come into Capital One's in that subprime tier, it's going to be very hard to get a credit limit increase on that card because you're, you've, you've been uh, labeled subprime. And I don't care. You can, you can use that card charge it up to the limit and pay it off every month for years and Capital One will not raise that credit limit. They just won't. You will do better to go to another bank and get another credit card and do that. But subprime, there's like, like, you know, I've been running these ads and I've been talking to a lot of people, a lot of people. And one of the things that, that's just getting me is America doesn't understand money from the factual standpoint. Like if I was going to go out and get a car before I went to the dealership, because th this is kind of my process whenever I do some stuff. If I want to do something, I need the credit. First thing I go to is my FICO, check my FICO score, check my inquiries, and then I'll do a little uh, research on the lender. And it's like, okay, because like right now I'm in a state of gardening because, you know, uh, by August, a lot of my inquiries will fall off. August, September. But essentially, one of the things that you have to understand is how money works. And, you know, once again, shout outs to the Credit Plug, shout out to All Things Real. Credit Plug has been telling you, you need to have your paperwork. You need to have your, he's been putting it out. And Credit Plug, I see what you're doing with the new thumbnails. I see your new game. You figured some stuff out. Um, 
But one of the things is people want to shy away from this. Like this one guy I was talking to who, who, who needs $30,000 and he's got a business, he's making money, but he's got some serious issues. And if things don't go the way he wants to, he's going to have a tax lien on his credit report, which is extremely hard to get off extremely and tax liens will stay on your credit report for 10 years so he, he he's he, he's making some moves he's making some moves but one of the things that I, I I consistently see is right now we're in what I'm gonna call payback season from the pandemic like I didn't do it but there were people who did not pay their mortgage for a year because they can get away with it, even though they had the money. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Now, all of this stuff is starting to come back. It's starting to actually really resonate with people. And there, a lot of people find out that's one of the worst things they ever did. Because, like, literally, it never even occurred to me not to pay during the pay. It never even occurred to me. It's like I had the money, I just paid my bills. But there's a group of people who decide I ain't gonna pay my bills because I can get away with it. And I'm just sitting there like, there's a cost to everything. There's a cost to everything, right? And I'm just sitting there like, because um, right now, let me go ahead and tell you what's happening. Um, and this is going to be happening real strong in June. I'm working on it this week. I am getting into credit repair, but I'm not going to do normal credit repair. Um, you know, there, there's, there's layers to credit repair. Like there's people who do credit repair where you can actually go to their website, sign up for their credit repair, and they never look at your credit report, right? And one of the things I see is a problem is, you know, this, this whole conversation, people don't understand money. People don't understand how banks work. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing is I'm going to do credit repair. And part of my process is I need to see your credit report first before we get into any details. Because if I was to say, hey, yeah, I can like, let's say you have a tax lien. I'm going to tell you. Tax liens are very, very hard to get off your credit report. Why? Who puts a tax lien on your credit report? The Internal Revenue Service. There is no collector. There's no collectors. Of, the, the Internal Revenue Service has its own collection department. Once that bad boy gets on your credit report, it is extremely hard to get off. Extremely hard to get off. And then. You know, there, there's other things that can be extremely hard to get off because you're not dealing like with like tax liens, tax liens, tax liens don't go to collections with from the Internal Revenue Service. They hold on to that. So you're dealing with the main the, the depositor on. Uh, it, it's just very, really, 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 really bad. So what we're going to do and um, I'm going to actually get on the phone, go look at your credit report. Now, here's one of the things that I know. There's going to be a lot of people who are not going to want to get their credit report. They're not going to get their credit report. They're not going. They're going to want to actually number one get information, talk, yap 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 talk, and actually piss around. Because literally, I was on the phone with someone and he's like, "Yeah, there's a lot of people with offering business credits. I'm just trying to find out what's the best deal." And I was like, "So you have told me that you have other people who are offering you the same things I am." but you're still looking for the best deal, but you got a 598 FICO score. There ain't no best deal for you. And I told him straight up, I was like, dude, you're not getting any business funding anywhere. Number one, you don't have an LLC. Number two, you have a low credit score. Number three, I bet, you know, I don't even know what's it like. I think you even have low income. Just based on what you're telling me, you see, I make $35,000 a year. I say, ain't nobody gonna give you any business funding. Well, low FICO, making 35 k a year and no business. You're not getting any business funding. And he was like, but why? I was like, why do you think that you can get business funding? 
He says, every, they make it seem so easy on the internet. Let me say that again. They make it seem so easy on the internet. So you can have a low income, a low FICO score, and in your mind, there's the possibility, the concept, the hope, the dream that you can get some money from somebody because you don't understand how money works. And I told him, I said, look, there ain't no way in the world you're going to get any. I said, honestly, you need credit repair and you need an education on how to position yourself where you can get money from these institutions in the future. Because it ain't happening now. I'm like, you're probably looking at two years before you'd be in a position to get anything from any institutions. And I was like, are you interested in credit repair? And you know what he said? Uh, I'm thinking about it, but you know, at the moment, you know, I got some bills, I'm working on my child support and everything. So I said, okay, so you just told me no. Because if they don't say yes, the answer is no. So I was like, so here you are, you're 30 some years old, you got a low FICO score, you have no money, and you don't understand that you have a huge problem that's gonna cost you money over time. He said, what do I mean? You go out and buy a car, that low FICO score, you're gonna pay more money for interest because you're gonna be instantly labeled as subprime. So like a car, I can go out and get a car, and I can get a car at maybe six or 7%, because even for people with good credit, interest rates are still higher and you go out and get a car, you're gonna be looking at 17, 18, or 20%. So we can go out and get the same car and your, your car payment will be three to $500 a month more than my car payment, even though we have the same car. So, you know, the more you sit down and you piss and moan and look and hope and wish and refuse to educate yourself, the more money you're gonna pay for anything the rest of your life. And that's what I told him. <clears throat> he didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear that. He was looking for some hack. He was looking. I was watching something that if you're truly financially literate, you know this ain't going to work. Someone was selling an age corporation with tax returns. Just stick with me. Let me go ahead and paint the picture for you. So you go out and you buy this age corporation that comes with tax returns and comes with an EIN. Okay. So let's go ahead and say you go, I don't even know how much these things cost, but let's say you bought that age corporation, got the tax returns and the EIN, and then you went to a bank and you got a loan using that information. And they gave you the loan, right? You just committed bank fraud because those tax returns are not yours. That e your EIN number is something that's based that comes off your social security number or if you're a corporation, it, it works a totally different way. So that tax return and EIN number are not yours. So you just went to a reputable institution and committed bank fraud because you submitted documents that were not legitimately your documents. And this is something that someone is selling. Someone is selling a recipe for bank fraud. More than likely, it'll work. You'll get the money. And if you make the payments, probably ain't nothing going to happen. But I guarantee you, you mix a payment and you get into derogatory and they start looking and snooping. Chink, chink. You could end up in jail. So why would someone want to go out and get an age corporation using someone else's tax returns? And this is one of the things, because I've been through the process with the 45 OCT. Um, because I have an S corp and I file with a W2, with, <clears throat> uh, a regular, not the W2, I forget that, the green tax form. Because with an S corporation, all of the tax burden comes back to me, Glendon Cameron. And I went out and I applied for something. They wanted to see my taxes. And I sent them the, the, you know, and the, the taxes for the business, right? And the internal revenue says, there is no record for that. And I said, oh, I have an S corp. And then I had to send them my name and stuff, and then they found the tax records that way. See, you know, the, this because essentially when a bank asks you for tax records and this person said there, there are some banks that will take audited financials versus your tax records. I was just like, no, 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 no. If a bank has it in their lending paradigm, their lending program that they need your tax returns, you cannot submit them anything alternative. 
It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. But this person is going to sell this and make a lot of money teaching people how to commit bank fraud. If you're financially educated and if you know the laws, you know how banks work, you would instantly see what he was selling was bank fraud. But someone's going to buy it and they're going to go out and commit bank fraud. And I hopefully they, they'll pay that loan on time because if they ever default or the banks get suspicious and starts looking and see that they actually got a loan with fraudulent documents. Because here's the thing. If the documents are not your documents, if they're from someone else and you go out and get a financial loan, that's bank fraud. That's bank fraud. But once again, people don't care. And this is one of the things I see. And this, this person was heavy, heavy, heavy in the CPN space. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, so you're, your, 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 your beginning was selling something that was fraudulent to begin with. CPNs was fraudulent. And I was just sitting there like, okay, okay. And how does all this work? The title of this video, people don't understand money. People, people look at it and like, this looks good. I got the money, I'll buy it. Don't understand what they're, they're doing this position themselves for bank fraud. And I'm just sitting there like, okay. But like, this is, you know, what I'm going to do with the, the credit repair. Uh, essentially, I have to see your tax returns. I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to have a whole system. And then the thing is, once we bring you into the system, we're going to educate you on how money works. And then this is something else. We're going to bring you in. Let's say you have bad credit. Let's say your name is Jordy. Jordy, you got some bad credit. Jordy got like a 550 credit score. And I'm like, okay, Jordy, what we're going to do is we're going to fix your credit. We're going to teach you how to use credit. We're going to teach you about money. And then we're going to teach you how to set up a business. And then we're going to teach you how to get bank financing in the future. So you get your credit fixed. You learn how to start a business. And then you get educated on how to get business credit in the future, right? So this is going to open up a completely different pathway for people who want to, because like I've been doing some research and there are people with what I would call subpar websites who are making a mint in credit repair. Why? Because people don't understand money they don't understand money so what you come into my credit repair program there's going to be two websites there's going to be a website where you can check and sign in for the credit repair and there's going to be an educational website where we're going to teach you about money credit business and all this other stuff because one of the things i have seen is that people really don't understand money they really don't understand money it's it's not but once again like i said at the beginning it's on the internet. It's free. And people still don't understand money. Like really, it is blowing my mind that people don't understand that if you were to sit down and do a little research, well, I would say for me, it's a little research because I know where to look, that I can literally go to credit, myfico.com credit boards I can go to credit, credit, my FICO forums, credit boards, find the card I'm looking for, f look and see people got approved, see what uh, FICO score they're looking at. And once again, lending guidelines have tightened, which means they made it more difficult to get money. And then literally take me about 10 minutes of research and I can find out, oh, I can get this card. This is what credit bureaus are going to pull from and all this other stuff. 10 minutes. It's on the internet. It's for free. Yet there's a ton of people who don't know. I'm like, it's kind of blowing my mind. It's kind of blowing my mind. And right now, their Zelle is in uh, Congress. They're thinking about getting rid of Zelle because so many people are getting, quote, scammed. These people are giving permission for their money to be stolen. And this is the bank's position. You said it was OK. And people's like, well, I was tricked. I was hoodwinked. I was bamboozled. I was led astray. But you gave permission. 
So this is, you know, like literally, uh, I'm going to do something very, very different with this channel now because people do not understand money, do not understand money. So um, I'm in the process of setting up the credit thing and the merchant account and all this other stuff. So we, we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be working on. But yeah, people don't understand money. And the information is on the internet for free. There's no reason for you not to be able to understand money when it's on the internet for free. But it is. And there's like, and I'm not talking about, uh, I was having a conversation with a banker because uh, I've got someone I'm about to enter into a partnership with. And he said that 20 million uh, working Americans have credit scores of 580. 20 million. Let's go ahead and do a little math. So let's go ahead and say, you know, because I, I haven't really figured out what I'm going to sell this for. But let's say I sold my program for 2500 And I got 2000 Let's see. 50 of those people per month. 50 times 12 is 72? No, it's... Um, Man, I, I, I just got dumb because I forgot how to add and attract. I'm going to have to go back to the old way of doing it. Okay, so that's 600 customers a year. And six times, let's see, three to 12. That's $150,000 off of 600 people out of 2 million, 20 million, excuse me. And once again, let me, I'll, I'll make sure. I need, to, I need to have my phone. Hold on a second. I'm gonna do that again. All right, so let's go ahead. We have real calculators because sometimes I get a little done. 20 times 600. Oh, excuse me. I get 600 of those people at 2,500. That's $1.5 million, 600 out of 20 million is 1.5 million. That's, let me see, it's 50 times 2,500, that's $125,000 a month. That is 600. Let's go back to 20 million minus 99%. Leaves 19 million in 800,000. So let's go 20 million minus 99.5%. Twenty million minus ninety-five. Oh, hold on. Let me go ahead and get this correct. Twenty million minus ninety-nine point five percent. That is nineteen million nine hundred thousand. So we're talking about. I can get. 0.2% of that 20 million people and make seven figures a year. Because people don't understand money. So there's some more stuff that's coming. So once again, I'll let you guys know what that will be very, very soon.